Okay, folks, going to do a little handheld here. I've got a uh, little project I just got working yesterday. So I'm coming down this morning. I'm going to give it a run through, see if everything works like it's supposed to. Um, so I'm going to make you a little dizzy here. So I got I haven't turned this on since yesterday, so we'll see how it goes. Um, so I just turned on the, so what I've got here, we'll just do a little walk around. This is a, um, my railroad's a Powerhouse Pro uh, DCC system. There's a cab there. And what I've got here is a prototype uh, breadboarded uh, block detector. And what I've got over here is an Apple II Plus I've been working on restoring to sell. Um, I have several Apple IIs, so this one I'm going to sell. But it's been operating really erratically. Um, that's why it's all apart. Um, but I added a, two boards into this system. One's a uh, serial board, super serial board, and the other is a simple input buffer. And the input buffer will take the output from the um, block detector and bring it into the computer so I can computerize my system. And if you look on the floor there, I got two little umbilical cords going over the layout over to this computer. And one connects it to the serial port on the NCE Powerhouse Pro system. And the other one connects to the block detector. So let's see. This thing's been running a little bit erratically. Um, it's running a lot better than it was when I first started trying to get it working. So let's see if we can uh, power it up and get it going. I'll uh, turn on the video screen and uh, let's see. I'll flip on the power and the thing should boot. And it does. So let me uh, let me put this thing in a uh, tripod mount, and you can see how uh, I'll start up the system. Hold on a second. Okay. Uh, hopefully you can see that. So basically, I can make this boot and automatically run, but um, I haven't got that far yet. So I have two pieces of this program. One's a little snippet of assembly code that reads the uh, um, block detector and does the driver for the uh, serial port. So I'm going to load that in. And then I'll run the control program. So that should have loaded. Run local control. And so, this is all set up to go. Let me switch cameras so you can watch the layout and the screen at one time. Hold on a minute. Okay. Uh, hopefully this works out okay. So the locomotive I'm going to operate, I've identified as number seven. And before I do anything, I'm just going to make sure my communication is going. So I set forward direction and speed. Let's pump some speed up. And I can hear it running, so let me stop it. Now, the, the fun part is I have some automation going here. So that's the beauty of uh, using uh, digital computers is you can automate. So I'll just hit the auto button and the whoops something happened over there oh a, a derailment all right so what this is doing is this locomotive and then i had the switch set wrong
So the locomotive is stalled out. Ow. Is, yeah, I've got issues. Okay. So this isn't working, so let me stop this thing and start it over. And maybe we'll uh, get somewhere here. So we'll hit, put the forward direction, because right now it's set to go backwards, and try the auto program again. So it's basically looking for that sensor. And uh, I don't know if you could see behind that board, but it's basically gonna go down here a little ways and stop, it should stop. Oh, you can't really see. And let me raise it up a little bit. Now you can see. And it's going back. And then it's going to stop. Right now I only have one sensor. Uh, normally I'd have two blocks, um, one on each end. But So I just go a time direction in this way. So here it goes. And it's going to hit this block here. And it's going to trigger my program and go another 15 seconds and then stop. And then wait five seconds. And then return. And then when it comes off this block, it'll wait another 15 seconds. So right about now, then it keeps going for another 15 seconds. And then it'll stop. Now what I'd like to do is get a second block detection system once I get the uh, thing proven and all working. Um, and then I won't go for time. I'll just go uh, basically for um, until I hit that block and maybe another five or ten seconds depending on how far into the block I want the, the uh, train to go before it stops. But basically, since I don't have a loop here, I want to have some continuous running. And this is the way to do it. And it's actually more entertaining in a way than, uh, than just one loop. And I could potentially, because I have three tracks currently, I could potentially have three uh, locomotives going at one time. But uh, that'll take... I'll have to get some more blocks going. Uh, the program will have to be uh, significantly enhanced. But that's what I got. This was a tremendous amount of fun to build and get working. And I think I still have a bit of fine tuning to do, but it's definitely uh, was a lot of fun. And uh, I got a big kick out of uh, getting this going yesterday. So that's what I got today. Hope you enjoy it.